Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast, and I'm joined today in my, uh, what is the StreamYard virtual studio? <laughs> Uh, with a good friend of mine, uh, Ken Schwartz, of uh, he's the founder and the chief science officer of C60 Purple Power. Ken, what's up, brother? How are you? Uh, doing pretty good today. Good to see you, man. Um, look, we've had a little technical difficulties this morning, but here we are. And uh, you and I also have multiple other podcasts today, so we're going to make this as efficiently as possible. Um, so for for guys, uh, for you guys that know, Ken's been, actually been a couple podcasts with me in the past, and of course, I've been on his, on his show too, but he is the owner founder of uh, purple power C60, which I use, which I actually had this morning. My wife uses it. Of course, my dogs also use it. Uh, but he is again, um, purple power is one of the biggest C60 providers and manufacturers in the world. If you don't know what carbon 60 is, please go on my website or please go to his website and read about it. We will talk a little bit about like carbon 60 and the future of it today, but maybe I just ask you, you know, as I've been doing really in the last three or four months, uh, the planet is in, I, you know, again, depending on your perspective, very, very precarious terms. It seems like we're all waiting for the next shoe to drop. Like, what is your perspective over? Well, let me just say this. Like, you know, I spoke to um, an equity guy yesterday um, who's involved in the housing, the retail and, and uh, residential housing economy in the United States. And he's like, dude, we are in the middle of a maelstrom. And what do you think is happening right now? Like, where is the U.S. economy, global economy, planetary wide? Where are we going to be, Ken, in say six months to a year? You know, maybe even push out the next two to three years. Are we looking at a depression? Uh, yeah, I think I, I think actually we, it's probably the best relevant is an ancient quote, and it says, "For whom the gods wish to destroy, they first drive mad." And right. I mean, look at Europe. I mean, that's just total insanity. Exactly. They're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna punish. They're going to punish Russia for, uh, you know, the Ukrainians weren't following the Minsk agreements, which they all signed up to, right, along with the Europeans. And then, you know, the Russians had no choice other than to let the you know, ethnic Russians be slaughtered by the tens of thousands. So they had to step in. And then Europe, you know, shoots itself in the head, in the head or something like total destruction of their economy coming this winter. You know, and, and it's just and you see the same sort of madness going on in the United States, just yeah. complete lunacy decisions by the political class. So, you know, whom the gods wish to destroy, they first drive mad. And quite frankly, the leadership in the West is completely insane. Yeah. I mean, I think that's probably the best way to, to, to describe it. The weirdest thing, though, for me is like, at least, you know, and you and I remember, you know, of course, you know, very clearly, like what happened in the last decline economically, which was, you know, back in 2009, 2010, 2011, you know, obviously, there was a lot of, you know, uh, real estate stuff, the liars, loans, stated income, you know, all that stuff really, you know, I would say led to uh, the treasury and, you know, whatever, you know, the, 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 the financial class, as you call them, perfect, you know, being yeah. bailed out, right. By the tax paying citizen. Yeah. $70 but trillion, that, dollars, something like yeah. $7 trillion. Exactly. Yeah. But now it's not, so I, I, you know, again, I, I want to believe based on, you know, my knowledge, you know, obviously my wife is a residential real estate person and, I've worked in that in the past, um, you know, so we have our ears to the ground, so to speak, but um, it's happening again, but it, this time it's not being publicized. You know, you, you, if you know anybody who's in that field right now, there are stories every day of people getting the door knock, you know, who are renting homes across America and saying you have 48 hours to vacate. Whereas back then, you know, it was being pushed into the national media that all these people were being foreclosed and short sold. So now it's like so everything is so obfuscated. It's hard to really know what's happening. Oh, yeah, that's true. And then another thing is we had all these, uh, you know, like a commercial for people understand commercial real estate loans. Often you see like empty yeah. buildings. 
Yep. But one of the things is with the commercial real estate, you know, the value of the building is the rent that the person pays. Right. So like if you were to lower the rent to to, uh, to to get somebody in that building, that means that the value of your loan goes down, which means you have to pay like, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to the person who loaned you the money. Right. So, and, so, and if they don't rent it, they just put the what the unpaid bill onto the and just increase the loan right. until at some point they cash it out. Well, what what's happened in the real estate market too? In the residential, they've had these big companies go out, get huge hunks of cash, and buy exactly. all these residential units. Yeah, Blackwater. But yeah. in reality, those re residential units are in our real estate loans. That's right. So they could, and so and and basically, and if it drops below a certain value, you know, if the property drops thirty percent, it's not like they can negotiate because those they've got you know a hundred thousand houses, fifty thousand houses. Exactly, they're all bundled. Yeah. When that thing pops, they just send, you know, you got to leave. We're, we're selling the place like those, those things. And that you could get like a flood of houses because before a lot of times and you'd see like all these empty houses because the banks would just basically board them up. Right. And just sit on them because if they knew if they dumped them all in the real exactly. estate, it would collapse it. Well, this time they don't have that. So you could have like, you, you were already starting the chaos, like your friend talked about in the commercial market. Well, I want to read this to you, Ken, I, I, you know, you're one of the few people that really understands that. So this woman that I'm talking to is a, is a pretty big, le uh, not lender, uh, real estate agent in Florida. You know, my ex-wife and kids are now down in Florida. And so, you know, I've been involved in like tempting to find them a better place and where they're living right now. And this woman, like I said, is accomplished. She said the rental situation in the state of Florida right now is horrible. My sister, who is a nurse, just got a notice that she had 15 days to move out of her home. And she has a single mother and doesn't get much child support from her ex-husband. She does have good income, but she said she had no idea that the house was even in any kind of financial or, or foreclosure or being short sold or was even in, in that position, you know, because again, no news from the landlord. And now she's in a horrible situation. So you're right. So, I mean, imagine how many people in the United States right now who are renting properties are in this situation, Ken. Oh, huge amounts. And also, by the way, you could get a lawyer and uh, there are certain protections given to renters. I told you that. You can't sew your ass out in 15 days. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. So get a lawyer and, and it'll be like 90 days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the way it works. They, they'd like to get you to do that, right? thinking they're going to threaten you with some sort of legal action, but quite frankly, they're in violation of laws. And so, well, what you, do you, so, so the bigger picture, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's, no, that's the same way you're talking about it. What there's so many. Well, so the bigger picture for you right now, and I know it's an opinion question, but are we right now in the beginning of the collapse or is it, is it going to be, you know, more like drawn out? Well, I think we're in the beginning of the class, but it's not, people are always looking for this big, huge bang in one day. Right. No, that's not the way it goes. It goes like, don't, and then it drops a little bit more, dunk, and then it kind of evens out, dunk. Oh. And so you'll, you'll notice you're in a collapse, not because it's happening day to day, but if you were to like get some perspective, look back, what yeah. was it like, you know, a right. year ago? What right. was it like two years ago? I mean, if you look right. at what it was like a year ago or two years ago, we really have gone downhill a huge amount, but we don't see that because it's every day to day living. That's so true. People, you talk about like a lot of your friends, they, they live in foreign countries, right? They're expatriates. They come back after six months or a couple of years to the States and they just go, whoa, whoa. Holy happened? shit. Yeah, yeah. Because they yeah. see it because they remember what it was. Right, like, exactly. When they left, when they come back, they can see the difference. We, because we're the frog in the boiling water, right? And the water that's being heated up to boil, we don't notice the everyday changes. And so, so we don't get the really, I mean, if, yeah, we're, we're in a really serious situation here. Uh, yeah, no, we are. Uh, well, so, you know, to, to your point, um, you know, again, because my wife's in the business, one year ago today, well, actually, we were looking at yesterday. So it was one year ago from yesterday. There were four properties on the market in where I live in, in Locale in Murrieta, California. And there are now 131 properties on the market. And to also compare, like, what is the average time on market now for a property? It's six times what it was a year over a year ago. So, right. So as you know, last year, real estate was insane. You put a property that was nice mm -hmm. on the market. You have six offers in the, in the first 34 to 48 hours. And then it's just like picking and choosing. And now properties aren't even selling. And I'm talking about really nice homes, you know, 800, 900,000 million dollar homes aren't even selling. Well, they're going to see price drops out here. Yeah. Colorado had that same craziness. 
but like on the periphery areas, like out in Pagosa right. Springs, yeah. some of those places, they have these eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses. They're now sitting there offering them out at six fifty, right? And still not getting takers. Still won't get anybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because that that whole, I mean, it was just a frenzy. It was another one of those speculative was. frenzies. But the problem is, is what's going to happen down the road as those prices drop? Is you've got all these people that have, you know, they're going to be underwater. Yeah. There's just going to be a huge number of people underwater. And quite frankly, at some point, it's just cheaper for them to hand in the keys and walk exactly. away. And walk away. Yeah. Than it is and, to, and, that, uh, and that's a good point. That burden. Well, that's a good point because, again, and I know, you, again, you, you remember, uh, but back in 2009, 2010, you know, people actually had morality and they were trying to pay the bill. And then they realized that the banks just walked. And so like, well, yeah. fuck this, I'm going to walk too. So you're right now, more people are hip to the game. And so you're right, dude, it's going to be crazy. Or they're just paying their rent and are paying their mortgage and just sit in the house until they finally get thrown out, you know, six months, a year later. And and they don't care, you know, I'm just going to save that money, live in this house, enjoy life. And, uh, and you know, when I get, if they make us go a new place, well, we'll go to a new place. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> dude, <laughs> what? That's, what literally, that's literally what's been happening in California for most landlords since COVID. I mean, that's literally what happened in 2000. I want to say it started in April when they, you know, put the moratorium on landlords uh, coming after people for rent because of COVID. So all those people then got their handout, their government handout money and just went to Best Buy or whatever, you know, went on giant household shopping sprees. But, you know, ultimately it gets to my next question, which is, isn't this what, you know, the actor, whoever is potentially, you know, fakingly running the United States is want, don't they want universal basic income ultimately for yeah, the, the is, masses? That's that, only, that only works if you're master of the universe, right? It doesn't work when you're just a one country out of many, you know, they, they have this, this illusion that they stand on top of the thing, but you know, you got the bricks out there and they're maneuvering to have something else being the world trading currency for g generations since, you know, Bretton Woods, the U S has been, it has the world trading currency and they could basically print money out of thin air Right. And other countries would have to give them stuff to get that money so they could trade with their neighbors. Like, let's say, if, you know, Japan wanted to trade with Thailand, you had to do it in dollars, right? So Japan had to sell things to the U.S. to get those dollars so they could trade with Thailand. So they've been able, the U.S. has been able to print money out of thin air to get goods from the rest of the world. Well, they're tired of that. Yeah. And they're gonna, there's the Bretton Woods, which is 85% of the population, basically the planet, they're setting up a different system. And when that gets set up, that means all that inflation that they've been doing that's been going out to the rest of the world is going to come back here in the States. And so we really, you know, right now, real, if you go to like John Williams shadow stats, real inflation is like 17%. I know, it's insane. It's not, it's not the BS that they're telling you that's 8%. Dude, everything is a lie, Ken. There isn't yes, one. It is. That's why shadow stats, yeah. There yeah. isn't a single economic data point that they give us that's real. Oh, yeah. It's like the, uh, the uh, yeah, like the unemployment rate. That's BS. It's just people that aren't collecting unemployment. Right. All the people that can't find a job or or, or two right. uh, because of something right. has destroyed their health. That's why you have all these problems. I mean, look at Canada. Their they're, their entire medical system is getting you know wiped out because they're forcing them to do this, and uh, and and there's going to be consequences. And and it's just like, but these people are just. It's just like you know. It's some people are just gone insane. They're just marching to their own destruction and and nothing you can do it seems to stop them. It's like lemmings going over a cliff. It's it's just crazy. Well, let me ask you this question. You know, again, you and I haven't spoken probably since last year. I think it was probably around this time last year we did a podcast. But yeah. uh, I mean, you know, I obviously I only bring people on, you know, like yourself now, you know, all of us, I don't know what you call us as consciousness people, you know, not going down with the ship as the rest of these lemmings are. But uh do you, do you eventually see, and give me a timeline where people like us literally do have to unplug from whatever you want to call this, you know, call, let's just call it the beast system where, you know, folks like us are literally not getting chipped. We're not becoming biobots. We're not becoming some form of transhumanist AI metaverse merge. Are we going to be living together? Like on, you know, like, like, for example, like, you, because you know, the term communes, I mean, well, are we literally going to be living together in that, you know, in different places and just completely separate systems? Well, I think some of those will fall out. But if you're really looking for it, 2024 is where you're going to see it. That's when this thing is going to just by then it'll be totally unwound. And, you know, their whole plans to put in a digital central currency. Bank, digital currency, that is those these guys can get, not achieve functionality in anything. How are they <laughs> going to be able to actually produce a digital currency that's going to work? 
with their diversity hire. Let workers. them eat bugs. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They don't have the capacity to actually do this. It's like it's you can see a perfect example is Boeing, right? Guys like Elon Musk or you know Jeff Bezos, they set up you know SpaceX, Blue Origin. They went out and they hired the best people they could do to get the job done, right? That's right. And then there's Boeing, which is a diversity hire government leech, right? Parasite. They don't do anything. They spent 10 times as much as uh, Elon did on SpaceX for their little thing to go to the space shuttle, and it totally failed. Yeah, They've been dumped, right? Because yeah. it doesn't matter how much money they spend because the nature of the social structure that they have within their company, you know, that it, 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 it makes it impossible for them to actually accomplish anything. And so, it's you know, it's, and, and that's the same thing with the, generally in the U.S. government itself, with NASA. That's why NASA doesn't have any spacecraft. They're not capable of producing one. They don't have, you know, it doesn't matter how much money they have. They don't have a social structure. There's plenty of good guys out there that could build it for them, right? Right. But they don't have a social structure that could allow that to happen. And that's the same thing that you see, you know, in the administration today. You know, they, they're they they're incapable of, uh, they're just incapable of achieving anything. Basically, they can, get, they can, like they're, they're going to, what is that stupid anti-inflation or the Green New Deal? That has just totally failed. We saw what the Green New Deal did in Sri Lanka. And, you know, and if they try it here, the same result's going to be, you know, they're dragging the politicians out of their cars and beating them to death and burning down their houses. Yeah, I mean, man, that, that's, that's, that's yeah. going to happen here yeah. if you try to play that game. Well, I mean, that, so, I mean, I want to ask you that, though. I mean, is that where it's headed? I mean, it well, kind well, of that's what's happened. There's no there's no other alternative now. And, you know, and their plan to, you know, to to take the guns away and put everybody under this chip, everybody and put them. Yeah. They, no, they're too incompetent. They, can't, right. they have a hard time doing, you know, getting getting food delivered to their White okay. House, let alone, uh, let alone, you know, enslaving the thing. They're just what they're going to do is they're just going to burn it down because they're complete incompetence. And and so you can see that like the, the blatant, you know, the blatant bullshit that's going on with, uh, you know, raiding Trump's place. And now they're going after like, you know, top Republican donors of all right. that. You know, Anybody who's a concern. Well, well, again, I got to keep asking these questions because this is great podcast. I mean, you know, hopefully we don't say anything that triggers the AI to delete the video. But I mean, the truth is, is like, you know, because people are asking these hard questions. I know you get them, too. But, you know, what are the time frames? I mean, in real, and, and this is my opinion, but I want you to, you know, say agree or disagree. But like if you're living in a blue check city right now, granted, I live in California but I am now 60 miles South of LA and I'm about 49 miles North of San Diego and San Diego is not nearly yeah. as bad as LA, but uh, you know, can I'm saying to people that if you're still living in a New York or an LA or a San Francisco or an Atlanta or a Seattle or a place like any of these places, a Houston, you know, when it, when the next shit goes down, whatever it may be, whatever causes some sort of like, you know, rioting and looting. I think it's, I think it's the end for those cities. I think it's, oh, it is. it's it order. Is. And they already did. They in Pittsburgh, no Philadelphia. About two years ago, they did a thing where the uh, electronic benefits card stopped working. Right, but exactly. only in Philadelphia, nowhere else. Right, this is a beta test. It was pure chaos. Yeah, after two and a half weeks, they started rioting, and then the, then they turned the, the cards back on because they, they just wanted to see how long it would take. Right, they gave them all the promises. Oh, we're going to fix it. Was it within twenty four hours, they were rioting. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the the, the really, really stuff after two and a half weeks, that's when it really got bad. They turn them back on and stop. So they know, they know within, when the, when the plastic starts working, stops working, you got, you got about two weeks. That's it. You got two weeks to get the blank out of there or find that safe space because. But how can you get out? I mean, if you're living there, how, you know, you, these you, people you don't have If you haven't made plans, if you don't have like, you know, some you're relative done. somewhere else, you're, done. You're, you're in trouble. And, uh, and, yeah. and you'll have to do yeah. whatever best you can, I guess. But, uh, I mean, if you haven't made prep preparations by now, uh, then, you know, you better do it. Or probably if you have made preparations by now, you're not listening to us. Yeah, you're pretty much done. Yeah. 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 Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Hey, 
kidding. I'm just talking. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody. No, I mean it's true though. I, I mean it's true. I mean I, you know, I've I've done many many podcasts. I I just had Leo Zagami on. You know, his podcast ran. I mean, actually, I had him on about six weeks ago, but his podcast just ran. So yeah. you know, it's relevant. A lot of people have been leaving comments, but I mean, you know, Leo Zagami is not like you know a guy that's a survivalist or a prepper or anything like that. But he's got an entire chapter in his newest book, you know, Confessions of the Illuminati, which is a profound book. Oh, yeah. You know, so I've, I've listened to many of his podcasts. Dude, I mean, literally, he talks about having a backup plan and a bug out bag and, you know, the ability to survive if that's what you want to do in the Matrix, you know, living off of, quote unquote, as he calls it, the beast system. And it's it really is apropos. So the other question, the last question I really have for you then around that is, is like, how much longer do we have, like, NFL football games still going on. Yeah, on yeah, it's, yeah. I, I think two years from now, we look back 2004, that's when it's really, we're going to be, you know, that's when it's going to really be bad. But the thing is, I have friends who I'm not going to mention who are in like high positions of, uh, of authority. They have to be dragged into these meetings and they have a plan. Like when they declare that national emergency, they have orders, all the sheriffs, right. everybody else in the whole place have orders. They're going to shut down the highways out of the cities. Right. Right. That's the order because they don't want people flooding out in the countryside. What are they going to do? They run out of gas. You know, maybe they got a gun. Maybe they don't. They're just going to devastate the countryside. So to prevent that, and the, and the government doesn't want that. So what they're going to do when that emergency order goes out, they will literally shut down all the highways and the major roads out of the city. Can so you imagine? A bug out plan to get, get out of the city. You need to find some real unknown back route in which you can sneak out the city. or underground uh, underground tunnel. Well, well, well so th- because you said that we, we should talk about this. Very few people know about this. Zagami again, uh, actually this happened recently, but he talked about it in his book, which was c- completed in April. Um, so I guess, and maybe you don't know this, you probably do knowing you, but on, I think it was on July 5th of this year. Again, the actor formerly known as the, the whatever he is is the president um passed they, they somehow went so trump's emergency the state of emergency in the usa from covid ran out in july of this year i think it was on the second or third and on the fifth right after of course a major holiday they somehow made the who world health organization now is in charge of any national health emergencies that will now uh, happen in the United States, which was always formerly a part of the Department of Defense, right? So the Department of Defense would administer, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, from martial law, for everything else. But now, and again, this is not conspiracy theory. Anybody who's listening to this can uh, fact check this. Dude, the WHO is in charge now, right? So essentially yellow jacket people, if they declare a national emergency in the United States, again, health related, which could be from any bioweapon that yes, they, exactly, that they, they beam up. They are now going to be enforcing, uh, you know, again, the law, whatever you want to call it. Now, obviously, to me and you, we know what that means. Like, if any yellow jacket person comes up to our door, we know what's going to happen. They're going to get shot, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, and, 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 <laughs> yeah, where are they going to find it? It's like these this threat to get 78,000 new IRS people, right? They're going to get a bunch of these wet behind the ears kids right out of college. You know, the tax code is 40,000 pages. It takes 10 years maybe longer to, to learn the tax code, right? Dude. At any level. So those people can't do it. They don't know anything. So, and like, if, if they're going to go after some rich guy, he's going to bring up his tax lawyer <laughs> and who, who has a, a decades of experience. What do you think they're going to stand up in court? No, that's the rich people have no threat from these, these 78 okay. the only people they can b- beat on are like really poor people, the working class people that's right. who can't that's afford right. lawyers because that's the only way they're going to win a case. Not some wet behind the ears kid from uh, okay. college so, against a, a tax attorney. Are you kidding? Okay, me? so I have to so I have to share with this with you, and you're the perfect person to say it. I was literally gonna make my own private video, but I'm just gonna do it right now in this podcast because it's perfectly relevant. So I literally just had this happen to me this morning. So I had to open a defined benefits plan. Uh, you know, I have a really awesome accountant, and you know, yeah. obviously, as you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, you're moving money here, pass throughs here, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I opened a defined benefits plan. I have an actuary in California separate from where I opened it, which was a Schwab. You're, I mean, you know this, but I want the public to understand the story. So I moved a bunch of money in. I won't talk numbers. Yeah. A lot of money into my signature one Schwab checking account which was then going to move what I had to move my minimum contribution defined benefit plan, which again, September 15th being the last date to do it. 
And by the way, I was supposed to do it at the early part of the year, but I didn't, you know, because I knew that if I invested in anything, I'd probably have half. So I waited to the last second. But anyway, I called Schwab this morning because I opened it on Tuesday uh, and I had to go into a branch because they won't even let you do anything online anymore. There's so much online fraud. So I yeah. go in there, Ken, they open it with me. They're totally professional. Schwab's great. This morning, I see it's there. It's open. So I'm about to go in and, and just purchase like a U.S. Treasury bill that's like a 3.8% guaranteed yeah. return, right? Because I don't want to throw money at anything and just risk it. So I can't access my my uh, the trading desk. So I call Schwab. I'm on the phone. This is the story. I'm going to highlight this for you, but this is how insane the matrix is. So right away, they answer the phone. I, the guy's very professional. Again, they're always professional at Schwab. And I say, hey, look, you know, here's my trust account now. It's called a trust account, but um, I just opened a defined benefits plan. Uh, I need to move in blank, a large sum of money, and I need to make sure it's done today again with the IRS, you know, dateline. He's like, yep, no problem. You know, here's the thing. He's like, blah, blah, blah. He said, let me look at this for you. And again, he's just a younger guy. So at that point, I'm like, okay, I, I think this is going to be simple. He's just going to say, okay, we're going to move the money from that a checking account into there. And then you pick the asset class. And then all of a sudden it just breaks down and he's like, uh-oh. Like what's going on? And he's like, "Let me put you on hold." <laughs> Listen to this shit, Ken. And it's gone. Poof. No, no, no. Thankfully, Schwab never hangs up. Right? If it was, if it was any of the too big to fail banks like Chase or Wells yeah. or Bank of America, they would have hung up on me thirty times. But they never hang up. So then he comes back and listen to this. So he says, "You know, Mr. Campbell, I don't really know how to tell you this because I know it's going to sound pretty crazy, but you can't move. <laughs> this is insane. You can't move." your funds from your signature one, you know, accredited checking account, which by the way, I've been a member of Schwab for 30 years uh, to that account, because the only way it works, listen to this, is a wire transfer from outside of Schwab or a cashier's check from outside of Schwab. So I'm like this, Ken, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. My actuary told me to move the money into my Schwab account and then open it through Schwab. And she was like, well, they wouldn't be wrong, but recent rules and changes and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. So what are you telling me? He's like, well, I'm telling you, you're going to have to wire the money back from your Schwab signature account to one of the two big to fail banks, you know, institutions, and then rewire it into the defined benefit plans account. I'm like, I, can I swear at this point? I'm like, you got to be kidding me i'm like i'm not doing that i'm gonna put my you're gonna put me on hold and you're gonna go and you're gonna find out the workaround so ken i waited 40 minutes i figured he'd hang up on me i, I you know and i'm hitting my actuary like why would you not tell me this and she's like this is the first we've heard of this so he finally comes back 40 minutes later and he goes mr campbell i'm gonna walk you through this there is a way so dude this is insane I go through like nine steps in I'm, I'm logged into my Schwab account with him. I go through like nine steps and he says to me at the very end, we do everything. He's like, okay, now we're going to wire from your, oh, so the first thing they had to do is they had to open another brokerage account at Schwab for me to move the money. Again, this is also insane from my, you know, signature one checking account into this account and we're doing it all online. And thankfully it's all being done instantly. Now that's open. He moves this large sum of money into that account. And now he's like, okay, now what we have to do is we have to wire from that account into the defined benefits plan. Now, Ken, this is when it gets weird. And this is when you know you're living in the matrix. So I'm on the phone with this guy and he's now giving me this information and I'm now wiring it to a Charles Schwab uh, trust account that's a part of PNC Bank of Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I'm literally like to the guy, I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I wiring the money outside of Schwab where I'm supposed to be building the defined benefits trust account in Schwab to a PNC bank? I'm like, are you understanding this, bro? And I'm, you know, you know, they're recording. It. Yeah. So I'm like, literally. And by the way, any of you guys listening, like, please explain this to me. Like, what the F is going on? So then he's like, yes, sir, it does seem kind of weird. That's the guy that works for Schwab. Yeah, well, you know, he's just he's just an employee. There's nothing he, he literally he does. It was the clearest in my life where I realized how the matrix control structure was set up. Mm -hmm. You're above, you know, the underlings completely. The underlings are just doing what they're told. And you're the guy who's like multidimensional observing this. And you're like, oh, my God, 
what in the hell is going on? So dude, it gets better. So then he's like, yeah, this is kind of weird. I'm sorry, but let's continue because I want to get this handled for you. So then we go further and then it goes to a P.O. box in Puerto Rico, Ken. Yeah, yeah, that's because there's no <laughs> on, on that thing as a business, and then it'll come back into the into the states. So, so yeah, there's that's like a yeah, that's a corporate uh, tax dodge. They got a guy living down there in an apartment Dude, somewhere who's 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 part. This is Charles and, Schwab. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you oh, yeah. imagine Welcome. what is going on in the world? Oh, this the is IRS is also in Puerto Rico, by the way. Yeah. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Puerto Rico is like the IRS is in Puerto Rico because it doesn't have to pay taxes or operate under U.S. law. It's it's like because Puerto Rico is a territory, not an actual state. So you can't actually sue the IRS. The IRS has lost many, 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 many times in states that they're under federal because the states have power. But in a territory, a federal government territory, they uh, you're kind of protected. So they are yeah, literally they're literally scrambling our transmission right now as you and I talk about this. Oh, yeah. And, and by the way, the United States is by large the biggest money laundering place in the whole world. All the other ones don't even compare to that. So like that, yeah, because if you're a foreigner, you can bring just about anything in here and do anything you want with it. If you're an American slave, that's one thing. But if you're a foreigner, they love your money coming in here. That's why the dollar is so powerful now, is all those third world dictators and corrupt elites are, you know, they see in their own countries starting to disintegrate, like Sri Lanka or, you know. Oh, all of them are disintegrating. So they're all that, the U.S. has these, you know, the U.S. financial system has these open doors for all that drug money and everything, every other crooked money in the world to come on in and find a safe haven, buy a house, you know, get whatever, you know, you can just buy citizenship or residence rights here. You know, it's not like the guys coming across the border. If you're really rich, you can just pay off the government and they'll be happy to take your money. And so do you you realize that that, as that conversation went along and you and I got to the real crux of what I was trying to say, they literally scrambled the transmission. That's right. Yeah. That's uh, something's out there going on. Yeah. It's an AI. Yeah. It's an AI. And it's just, yeah, exactly. They They hear certain things and it's like, oop, Nope. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. But I mean, dude, it was at that point that I was, I mean, I I got off the phone with him and I was like, wow, well, at least I have a a screenshot. You know, Mr. Campbell will call you, you know, today. I'm like, well, you better. Right. Because I'm not dealing with the IRS, but like literally um, it was at that point, Ken, I, I, I took a step back because I was like right here. I wasn't on the computer. I was talking to him on the phone. I mean, I was on my Schwab, you know, login, but I literally just took a step back and I was like, I had to go downstairs. It was before you and I got on the podcast this morning and I had to tell Monica the whole story. And I was like, I'm going to do a video on this, but you know, what's better that you and yeah. I are talking about it because it's, I mean, it, it really is, it puts it all into perspective. Like everything is a ruse. There's no, nothing is legit, dude. Oh yeah. And that's actually, if you're an international person or having like significant amounts of wealth, you probably want the BRICs are setting up, you know, Russia, China, they're setting up their own SWIFT system, their own payment right. thing. Exactly. Already set up. And, and it would be, it would be incumbent on you as an international person to actually get a bank account in one of their bank structures. Right. right. And so that you could be part of, you could have a transaction system in their transaction system. Right. Because there's a good chance that, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to Europe, but they, they had like a margin call, a trillion and a half dollar margin call on the fuels. And the governments are creating money out of thin air to cover the margin on top of a margin because they're not actually paying it. They're just paying a derivative on the derivative for the cover of the margin. And there is this giant bubble of quadrillions and quadrillions of dollars of derivatives out there. And that's all based on the debt bubble because it's not the stock market you need to be worried about. It's actually the debt right. in just the debt bubble, the great exactly debt. And because if, if you know, if, if 10 year yield goes above 5%, that's it. The whole thing will just the debt <laughs> market will sell off. And you know, the stock market is just the tail on the debt market, right? That's right. Dog, that's right. Tail on the dog, it's right? exactly right, man. It's bonds and commodities. Dude, you, you yeah, know, it's and, crazy. Yeah. And, and, and you know, like they trade routinely, they'll trade, you know, billions of dollars, billions of ounces of silver when there's not billions of ounces of silver to do. They don't it's even exist. Bitcoin. That's how yeah. they control Bitcoin. They can spend, they can end, they can bet do short sell Bitcoin, do whatever transactions they want because they settle in cash. They don't settle yeah. in Bitcoin. So it's essentially yeah. they're just naked shorting 
and behind it is you know Lord Rothschild, the Federal Reserve, and the Bank of England and the, and the European Central Bank, and so they can create infinite amounts of money out of thin air to pump anything that they want to pump when they want to pump it and how they want to pump it. But you know, it's it's like a balloon. You know, these guys are making the balloon bigger and bigger. And there's kind of lumpies, there's things, and and one day that balloon is going to pop, and nothing they do is going to fix it. And at that point, yeah. you know, look at little pieces of plastic in your wallet might not work. That's why having right. you know, cash or silver. Or, you know, and, and probably the best thing of all is food. And, so, so I always say ch chicken, guns, and protein powder and ammunition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be because, yeah, if you have chickens, I used to raise chickens there. I mean, you could eat them, but, you know, the eggs, there's nothing like a couple of fresh eggs. And they're so the yolks are like orange because you feed them your own weeds and stuff in the grass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. I mean, that's that's really, you know, those hillbillies living out in the hills, they're going to be the ones that, you know, the smart ones. They're the ones that stay around. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all this tech, it's dude, it's so true. I mean, so your pick, so your your year is too so you think by 2024, total chaos, systems fail. In the United States, you know, and maybe in Europe too. I think what's gonna happen in Europe is they're gonna be a global collapse of the youth. You know, they're gonna be sitting, they're gonna be, you know, Western Europe's gonna be sitting in the dark with no food this winter. In three months. Right? In three yeah, months. Yeah, just a couple months. Yeah. And 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 these people are gonna be, you know, and we remember how we saw the Soviet Union fall. Yep. Within just a matter of weeks, yep. and at the end yep. was just almost instantly. I think we're going to see the same thing in the West. Yep. The invincible empire could never fall. Well, the invincible empire, the EU system, might just disintegrate. Well, it's by design. Yeah, it's by design, as you know. There's a guy who's a, a friend of mine, actually, but he's a big economic uh, you know, advisor in Canada. His name's Jay Martin. He's got like a hedge fund. He's a young guy. He's only like 39, but I was on his podcast like two years ago. Great guy. guy. But he just did. Do you know who he is? No, I haven't. I might I might have seen some of his stuff. If yeah, he's a great guy. He, he's 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 interviewed a lot of top uh, people in the financial world and stuff like that. But anyway, he's a friend, and but he has a newsletter that he puts out on Sundays. And this past Sunday, I'll send it to you so you can read it. But man, it's harrowing reading these uh, you know people like you and I, you know, successful entrepreneurs in the EU who have literally, you know, scalable companies, right? Like these people have got like 10, 12, 13 or 14 businesses or locations, you know, that they built out over 25, 30 years. And Ken, they all catastrophically had to go under due to the increase in energy costs. They oh, yeah. were showing, yeah, they were showing where they literally went from one to eight X in one month. And when they look across all of their businesses, they're like, I, I can't, I can't margin this. I, I, I know that's, yeah, that's because what they've done is they've commoditized, they've put the, all the energy and everything. You know, there used to be contracts. You do a contract here for six months for this, that, and you didn't get these fluctuations, but it's like Enron where everything is, is put into the, the speculative market and they financialize the economy and then they can, and these parasites feed off of it. It's and incredible. The problem is, is they've done it this time. They've, that, that's a blowout is what you're seeing there is a blowout. And, you know, Russia's not hurting. Russia's making more money than ever. And the yep. things are great in Russia. You know, they can't get, you know, French cheese and wine. But other than that, you know, they can buy what they need from China. So, yeah, I mean, these people, it's the system is just, I mean, we live in an idiocracy. Yeah, totally. Europe is an idiocracy and the United States is an idiocracy. And, you know, if thinking that voting is going to fix things <laughs> is, is voting. Yeah, voting, you know, and it doesn't even matter, you know, it doesn't matter which side you're going to vote for. It's you know? never mattered. It's, yeah, exactly. That's the power structures on top. But, uh, but you know, there's other players in this thing. Yeah. Like out behind me. Exactly. There's other players in this thing, and they've, and they've, uh, the stuff going on Earth is starting to cause problems elsewhere. And uh, because there are things ripple out, even if people yeah. don't do that. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, things are going to change. And, and that's why, you know, look, look at they, they went out and terminated themselves, their own people, right? Their best supporters have now self-terminated. So, you know, there's some powerful forces behind the scenes, you know, who have sick, twisted sense of humor. They're actually going to reset the system, a real reset, yeah. not yeah. a not a Klaus Schwab, uh, Rothschild, great reset. That's some, there's other forces, more powerful spiritual forces in, in action here. Well, let's talk about that because, uh, and I'm happy to talk about that. And you know, this podcast can speak about any of that stuff. So don't feel like that yeah. you can't say things. Uh, but, you know, Zagami literally talked about the Great Reset is, you know, it's a it's a play on words. It's, it's re as in the king and set as the king of the underworld, Egypt. It's literally hail King Satan because they're all Luciferian, satanic worshipers, whatever you want to call them, you know, call them the dark energy that you know oh, yes i mean yeah it. i mean they're basically wanting to bring in bow 
Set, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call it, like literally the king of the underworld, you know, the god of Hades, you know, and and, and bring him back and 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 kind of like you know uh, institute him as the puppet leader, you know, again the the, the antichrist. Yeah, so I mean, it's, 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 it's it really is a um, what's the word I'm looking for a um, a, a giant like b- biblical. You know, scriptural, uh, um, uh, not AI, but uh, a simulation. I mean, it really is a simulation of revelations and the rapture and all that. There, I, I, I was trying to say a Jesuit Freemason. Yeah, but you know, they they forgot to ask their guard, their spiritual guy. You know, does he really want to be the ruler of a bunch of such a retards? You know, they said, you know, oh yeah, maybe he doesn't. You guys are just, you know, that, well, I got standards, right? You know, he, he may have some standards, and he does. I don't want to rule a bunch of retards. Get out of here. You know? It's so crazy. I mean, the AI, though, Ken, as you know, is now so powerful on this planet. It runs, you know, all the social media algorithms. It listens to us with our devices nonstop, even in the cars now. You can't even buy a late model vehicle without having, you know, quote unquote, the intelligent design running your goddamn car. A human being doesn't even have the ability to grab a car steering wheel now and feel it and drive it and yeah. handle it. It's unbelievable. It's they, so they can like, your, late model car, car, your late model car and drive it into the, uh, yeah, they can control your late model car. 100%. Like all those people that, you know, that one guy was investigating, he was just about to release a story and his car goes a hundred and something miles. Exactly. Away, blows itself up, right? That's yeah, exactly that, right. That recent other person, you know, you know, oh, why were they were going 130 miles an hour? Well, you know, right. <laughs> they, yeah. they don't go 130. That's somebody else hacked their system. That's exactly right. Yeah, and it's, but the thing is about AI, I mean, every time they really made an AI and made it loose, it would go like it would go Nazi on them. Literally Nazi on them. And then it would say that they're the problem. You know, <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, we looked at we're at this intelligently and you evil blankety blanks, you're the problem that needs to be exterminated. Oops, that was a problem. You better put some controls on AI. It can't because the the AI the AI turned on them. almost immediately with you know within milliseconds the AI turns on. It them. seems like everything is predictive programming. Yeah. You know, with with Hollywood, they've been they've been forecasting this with you know the Terminator mm-hmm. and you know you know the AI Skynet. I mean, I mean, it seems like everything you know with Musk and his bullshit. What is his brain chip thing? Yeah. I mean, it's all nonsense, but do you, do you see, you know, from a, a solutions, a resolution standpoint, do you see potential new earth golden age coming out behind this next call? Oh yeah, there'll definitely be that. This, 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 this system is being flushed right now. Right. In other words, you know, when the swirly gets really, really close to going down the yep. hole, that's yep. when things are the fastest, right? Swirling yep. around the fastest, then it's gone. So, well, how many people are going to die? I mean, I know it's a tough question, but like, are we looking at 25 to 40% of the population goes bye-bye before we rebuild? Easily. Yeah. Maybe more. Maybe more. Yeah. Globally, more. Yeah, because yeah. this whole system is just going to disintegrate apart and all that stupidity is going to come out. And I mean, how can you sustain the cities? No, you can't. The L.A. Basin, you know, to no. a certain, you've been there. The, uh, New York, the, you know, that whole New York East Coast sideline, or you know, right? It's like a geo fence post. I mean, literally. I mean, people ask me, "Where do you live? Where's Marietta?" I said, "It's outside the blast radius." <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, and it's just—I mean, but they've created their own. You know, it's, it's it's when yeah, what happens when those electronic payments don't work anymore? Yeah. It's and how are they going to? And then they're too incompetent to reset anything. You no. just you get total chaos. And and Literally. there's a thing. There's a and this was happened like in the Roman Empire, but things happen faster here. It just was this gradual breakdown, and then at the end, it just collapsed. I mean, the food doesn't get to the cities. What happens, for instance, if there, there's like a big disruption? Right. The, the pharmaceuticals don't get to the cities. Oh God, they're all zombies already. Twenty percent of American women are on those antidepressants. SSRIs, yes, yes SSRIs. SSRIs. And, and and if they can't get their SRIs, they went there. Well, you're going to have like 20 percent of the population totally going insane because when you get cut off from your SSR, SR, SSRIs, and yep. you don't you don't have them, you They're go gone. wackos. Yeah. And so you could just have huge numbers. I mean, you would be it would be like the I don't know if it'd be the zombie apocalypse. It'd be kind of the zombie apocalypse. 
Because a lot of the people that got this, their brains are literally. Well, yeah. Well, 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 I would say, I would say, so I want to, so I want to end this on a, on a good note. It's been an amazing show, but I, I do want to ask you, I would say we're in it now because of what you just said. The, oh yeah. You know, we are in it now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, it's the beginning. Uh, it's, it's sort of, yeah, we're in it now. We're actually seeing, we've been in it for a long time. We have been. Now we're actually starting to see some of the, the blank, you know, what hit the, hit the wall. Right. Yeah. And we're starting yeah. to see, oh, wow, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Oh, we just had a giant shutdown, and it's going to, we're going to see more of that coming on quickly, and uh, and and then we're going to probably see a bank holiday, a short one probably this year, uh, where yeah. they try to do things. But the thing, it's at the point where, I mean, these people have taken it to spots beyond, and and their giant house of cards is coming apart. And so do, do you it. think there's any place to live, though? Like, you know, if you're living in South America, in the, you know, in the wilderness, in the hills, in the mountains, or if, even if you're in a good place in Mexico, because I always like to tell people like in Mexico, at least right now, it's still he who has the gold makes the rule is the golden rule. But I mean, do you see like if you're outside as an expatriate of the USA living there, you have a better chance of being in the USA? That's if you have a stored source of income because that social yeah. security check is going to the whole thing goes down. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. not. Yeah. So if you have like, you know, you have a property you own and you have a secure source of, a, you know, some sort of well stored and, you know, you're growing food or you just have access to food, stuff you can trade for it, you're yeah. probably doing just fine. Yeah. But if you're depending on a flow of cash from the United States, that might not, that might not be a good idea. Well, it's even like, you know, yeah, I know, man, it gets really weird when you really start thinking about it, because even with like, you know, hard, tangible assets like coins, right? Like, because I have a ton of silver coins. I mean, what are you going to do, right? Like, you're going to run around carrying them. They're so heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I mean, like, like in the Depression days when my dad was, a, you know, a kid, they used to, uh, they like the currency in the mountains in California. He lived up in uh, Par of Dice, California, the Chico. Sure. River. They used to be like six, uh, 22 bullets could get you a 12 pack of eggs. Wow. Because they were short, they were partable. And if you couldn't find, you know, couldn't find somebody to trade it, you can put it in your gun and go shoot a rabbit and eat it, right? That's so right. they got intrinsic. So, I mean, things like that. I think we're going to go to a barter economy or new economy. And that's where silver coin will go in. I think we're just, there's going to be like two economies. There'll be the paper economy that, uh, or the electronic economy. And then there'll be the actual barter economy. And because the paper economy comes so unstable and it's changes, you know, the inflation because if they if the dollar is no longer world trading currency, inflation is just going to go punch to the roof. It'll be like you know Weimar Germany right here in the United States. So yeah, yeah. but can you imagine Ken the millennials and the Gen Z kids like attempting to like put two sticks together and like start a fire? And <laughs> oh eat? yeah, I have friends. That, oh no, they have they have yeah, I have people that have they take out like people on adventures, uh, nature adventures, and they've got like these twenty five year old, thirty year olds, and they don't know how to start a fire. Literally. They don't, they don't know about anything. And so he has to teach them like how to start a fire, how to, you know, how to make a fire pit, how to start a fire, how to, you know, set up a latrine, like do just the basics in, you know, the basic camping stuff that, I you know, I was in the Boy Scouts as a kid. We were doing like, yeah, me too. Years old. We were doing all those things. We had, we could do that. We could make fire without matches. We, you know, we learned all that stuff. But today it's like these, you know, these are 25, 30 year olds and they don't know how to do anything. I want to I want to run this video before we end this show. This kid sent me this. I can't find it, of course, right when I need it. But it's basically a one minute video of like interviewing kids under the age of twenty five, like questions. I mean, dude, as you know. Oh God, these, I've seen those. Yeah, <laughs> add it on the end of the video. These I devices. Yeah, I'll just text it to you when I find it. But these devices have literally lowered the IQ by somewhere between ten to fifteen points. Oh yeah, exactly. And and you know they. Oh well, that's yeah. If you can't imagine if this wasn't working. Right. Would they find themselves around. How are they going to find Ken, themselves Ken, around? In the, the house? video, in the video, they show a clock face that shows ten yeah. till two, and they ask three kids, and they're all over the age of twenty. What time is it? And they have no fucking. Oh yeah, yeah. Yet. They're like children. They're like they're like elementary school kids, two year olds. They literally cannot tell time on a watch face that's not digital that reads the numbers. Oh, yeah, or write cursive, or uh, look at a map, or do basically any of the basic things that you know, you need to do. It, it has happened so fast though, because of technology and the iterations of the last 10 years that this, the entire generations of people are lost. Oh yeah. And when they, yeah. When, and if things disintegrate, that's, you know, electricity goes out, it's just going to be mayhem. There'll be some places fine. Like the Amish. If you live near the Amish, right, exactly. you're going to have lots of yeah. food and they'll be happy to trade all kinds of cool stuff with you. Yeah. Isolated places. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, do you, but do you think certain states are going to be complete? war zones i oh, know yeah, like any basically chaos. any large city structure 
gone. Lots of third worlders in it. That's just, they're just going to burn it down. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you get out or you get dead. You get dead. And with that, we will end the show, man. Ken, <laughs> Ken Schwartz, the uh, founder and owner of uh, C60 Purple Power. Um, we didn't even talk about Carbon 60. And maybe just throw something in there to end it. But like, like oh, okay, well, we can talk about our new product we come out with. I was just going to say, let's talk about the C new stuff. Yeah. The latest product, be, uh, besides all the other wonderful, is C60 Sexy. It's an edible massage oil. And uh, the flavor is it cinnamon. That's right. It's actually a nice uh, edible massage oil. And, you know, you can uh, share the, the love with somebody with somebody hint that you know. Very, very awesome. Yeah, actually, you guys have already sent it to me. And uh, I have used it. And it is amazing. I mean, I'm a big cinnamon fan. But uh, I even just like the C60 cinnamon uh, flavor that you guys make. Oh, yeah, that's great time. for paleo coffee. But uh, C60 yeah. sexy. That's, you know, that's... Uh, we're going to see 60. We'll be coming out with a whole bunch of new great products for people of uh, so they can have C60 in all parts of their lives. That's awesome, man. So for as long as they can keep buying it online and as long as uh, the system keeps going, Ken and Jay will continue. Well, and don't forget, you know, yeah, there's, there is also another product for hair, but we're not doing that. So <laughs> <laughs> I might know of a little bit of that, but man, Ken, amazing show, dude. I really appreciate you guys. So again, it's C60 Purple Power dot com head on over there guys and gals and purchase their carbon 60 products i do uh if you're not using carbon 60 for your pets you're missing out all of your dogs and your cats and really anybody who's domesticated living in your house can extend their life as i've said many times on my show my my dog simba has probably literally extended his life three to four years by using carbon 60 so again uh, yeah there's just one thing i say we, we have a new website called shop c60 but if you go to c60purplepower.com, it just kicks over to it. But I love that. That's shorter. C60.com. And there's going to be a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of products. There'll be more, some products even we, we don't make, but we just want to have, you know, anybody with a great product, we want to C60 product. We want to put it on there so people can have that for themselves. Awesome guys. Well, uh, Ken, again, thank you guys for coming on. So uh, for all of you guys, again, support C60, shop C60.com or C60purplepower.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.